Paul writes about the perfecting and the maturing of the body of Christ, about it being uh, this, this place where we're one faith, one mind, one spirit, one baptism, that we're, we're jointly fit together. That's where this verse comes from. It's the fourth chapter of Ephesians. He's already written this letter to the Colossians. And it's the short, choppy, fiery letter because he's, he's pounding Gnosticism. He's going, this is blasphemy. And then follows it with a letter that really doesn't seem to be written specifically to the Ephesians. It seems to be a letter that was written to the entire area saying, this is what we believe. And it lays out what it is to be a child of God. And in that, he says, we are to come together. This is where it says we're jointly fit together in the fourth chapter of Ephesians. We walk worthy of our vocations in that we all are trying to grow and mature in the things of the Lord. And we're to come together and we're to, we're to create an environment where everyone can grow. We don't have to agree. We are to sharpen one another. We're to refine one another. We're to purge one another. We're to, we're to grow together. Or let our differences be our strengths. And he says, for the perfecting of the saints, to accomplish that, he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Now, that typically is seen as the offices of the church. I'm not so sure about that because we, the apostles, they said we don't have those anymore. There were the 12 or the 13 or how many ever hundreds there were. There, there's certain requirements to be among the apostles. The apostles are set apart. And prophets, we don't need because it's canonized. The word of God is finished. He's spoken. Now we just need to read and move forward in his word, study his word, grow from it. Well, of the four or five offices that may be listed, two of them we write off. The third one in there, the evangelist is typically not a paid position. You know, somebody may travel around, set up their tent, and do tent meetings and give love offerings, and that's how they earn their money. And then you've got this pastors and teachers. I don't discount that the church itself needs to have those that are leaders. How those people lead, I have differences in because we are all supposed to be part of the body of Christ, growing and working together for the edification and the building up of the body. That's happening, we're good. But, but let me color this, this, uh, this passage with a little different color of a crayon and see if it makes sense. You tell me. The word apostle, there are the apostles, no, no issue. But the word apostle really means to be sent. So if someone feels like they're sent as a missionary to, a, to another land, to China or to Myanmar, wherever, they're being sent. That's all it is. In that sense, they're an apostle. They're being sent there. That's where they feel like they need to go. That's where they feel like the Lord's calling them. That's it. To be a prophet is someone who speaks the law, who preaches the law. An evangelist is the gospel. Now, this pastor and teacher, they seem to be lumped together as one, and they are. I did a video earlier about training, training up your children. Scripture doesn't say to teach your children in that sense. It says train your children. Train your children up in the way they should go because training has two aspects. There's the practical and then there's an educational in this, in uh, scholastical, I guess. And the practical is you teach your children, you don't touch the stove. You don't play under the car. You, you, don't, you don't play in traffic. This is how we go potty. We don't potty in our pants. 
This is how we clean ourselves. This is how we brush our teeth. This is how we sit in public. This is how we speak to adults. You're training your child. The same way you train your, your I, I, I use this example, you train a horse to side pass. Does he want to side pass? No, but you want to open a gate. And that, that tool, that skill is needed. It makes it easier on the horse, makes it easier on the rider. Do you teach a dog to have a soft, soft mouth with a bird because he wants to have a soft mouth? He probably wants to eat that bird, but that's not functional. You shoot the bird, the pheasant, the duck, the quail, the dove, you need it to come back intact. It's not his meal, it's his job. You're teaching and training what he needs to do to be functional. That's one aspect. Then you teach your children math, science, geography, history, all wrapped up in the Word of God with this biblical worldview. The pastor side of it comes from pastor being in the pasture with the sheep. The pastor, the shepherd, doesn't teach the sheep algebra or hermeneutics. He teaches the sheep. He trains the sheep. He shows the sheep where the good grass is, where the still water is. That's a wolf. Stay near me. I protect you. And meanwhile, I cut the matted up wool from around your bottom so that you can have a bowel movement because it's all matted up. And I anoint your head and nose with, with olive oil because you're covered with parasites. He's, he's, he's not teaching them math. So that pastor and teacher they really do flow together. So if we look at it, yeah, there are people who are sent to be missionaries and there are people that are sent, called to be in uh, a ministerial occupation and they're paid through the body of Christ. But let's look at it more personal because this is where the Holy Spirit works. Let's say you're sent to the emergency room. Someone in your family is ill and you're in the emergency room. And just in your normal conversation, as you go, because you're walking in the spirit, you're speaking of the things of God in a place where everybody is glum, you're thankful. And every place where people are, are miserable, you're walking in joy, even though you're not physically fit, you're not, you're, not, you're not crazy, but you've got a different countenance, you've got a different mindset, you've got a different heart. And people are listening to you talk, even though they look like they're asleep or they're reading a magazine, and they're being ministered the word of God while you're there. You were sent. They may never respond, but what if they do? What if they actually get up and walk over to you and go, what is this thing that during this time of crisis, you still have joy? Then you move from that place of being that apostle, being sent, to that place of a prophet. And you start telling them why it is the way that you are. You put the law in front of them so that they can see their sin. No one gets saved outside of the law. The law is perfect, holy, good, able to convert the soul. We need the law. It's the schoolmaster. So you have been the one that sent and you still remain the one that sent. And now you're putting the law. You're being the prophet. If they respond to that, they're convicted of their sin. And what, what must I do to be saved? Now you move to the position of evangelist. And you start giving them the gospel. If they receive that gospel, now you're in the pastor-teacher mode. You might only have two minutes. You might, you might have a short period of time and you go, listen, you, you need to do this. You need this, this is the kind of church you need to find. This is the kind of word that you need to look at. This is where you need to start in Scripture. Don't start in Genesis. Don't start in Matthew. You'll get caught up in the genealogies. You know, what, whatever your counsel is at that point. You're being that pastor teacher. They need to find themselves a pastor teacher. They need to find themselves someone who will pastor them and give them that fundamental basis, that line of this is, this is what you need to do. This is how you do it, da-da-da-da-da-da-da, so that teaching can be effective. You've moved through these four or five positions as you move through life. You're being sent to places. 
so that you can affect people, so that if they will listen, you can preach the prophecy, the law to them, so that you can move to the place of evangelism and train them up in the way they should go so they can do it for someone else. This is, this is that cycle where we're making babies because that's what sheep do. We make babies. We make Christians. In that sense, <laughs> we don't do it. The Spirit of the Lord. But we get to participate. It's a good thing. This is what we do on a daily basis. And we're in different places at different times. We are all given gifts. Some are stronger. Some people are sent to a different land where we're not. Some people have a greater gift of evangelism. Some have a better teaching platform. But we're all called. We all have some of these gifts that we can share and use to the glory of to advancing his kingdom and rescuing souls from eternal damnation. We get to participate as his children. Amen.